So in my last Pika guide, I went over the basics, normal ways to use Pika's moves, basic strategies, and so forth. If you haven't checked that out already, I highly suggest you do because I will not be going over any of the information covered in that video. I also will not really be explaining terminology, so if you don't understand what I'm saying, please go back to either my last Pikachu video or my general basics of Smash Ultimate. This is the intermediate level Pikachu guide. First off, I'm going to be talking about neutral. Now that you have some hours under your belt as Pikachu, you're probably used to Pikachu's speed. However, I mostly talked about vague offense and defense, so let's get into slightly more specific situations. Pikachu's aggressive neutral is amazing. While it can be parried, running behind a Thunderjolt is an amazing way to start pressure, or at the very least, take a lot of space on the stage. I almost always start off the match with a Thunderjolt into an aggressive option, just because that's how I like to play, aggressively, and it has an incredibly high success rate. If your opponent seems to have a good feel on parrying Thunderjolts, fear not. Pikachu's neutral is still incredibly strong. Fair is safe on shield and incredibly difficult to parry. Same with back air, given the fact that both can cross up your opponent's shields, and if you space them in front of them, they can be safe. If you hit one, it either leads to combos at low percents, such as the forward air strings or back air strings, or regardless, incredible positioning at mid-high percents, which can lead to juggles or offstage play or edge trapping, which are all amazing for Pika and stuff I will go over in a little bit. If you expect your opponent to jump when you are running at them, RAR up air honestly is a great way to catch them, and because the move is a lot safer, or rather shorter, it is actually great for people if they are dashing backwards to try to catch an aggressive movement like a forward air because upper will be faster so you can jump and then quick attack out of harm's way. Mixing up running down tilt, running fair, running raw up air, thunder jolt runs, all that will be most of what your aggressive neutral is. For defensive neutral, posturing with thunder jolts is still great as your opponent has to still immediately deal with it by either throwing out a hitbox to ping with it, shielding or parrying it, or jumping around it. If your opponent shields it, you are closer to getting a shield poke fair or back air, which happens a lot due to the fact that Pikachu short hop puts him at pretty much the head of any mid-height character or taller. If they do shield it, you probably took some space going forward, which means you have more space behind you to work with, which is fantastic for a bait and punish style game. Either way, throwing out defensive retreating fares and nares is still incredibly hard for most characters to deal with unless they are going to hard commit forward, but if you shield their hard commit forward or you dash backwards when they're going to hard commit forward, then you're going to get a punish pretty much every time due to Pikachu's speed. Waiting for your opponent's response is really strong with Pika either out of a thunder jolt or a defensive forward air just due to how fast his moves are so you can always, always punish whatever your opponent wants to do or you can outspace them and then get a punish afterwards. I mentioned punishes and that is something I want to touch on real quick. Pikachu out of shield punishes are amazing. Nair and back air are both incredibly fast and will hit pretty much anything out of shield. If your opponent keeps pressuring in front of you with safe aerials such as Chrom's fair, Lucina's fair, make sure to try to turn around before you shield so you have access to your back air out of shield, which is going to be your farthest horizontal out of shield option. That is still quick. Up smash does hit in front of you, but it is frame 11, I think, out of shield or frame 10, and back air will be frame 8, considering it is a 5 frame aerial plus the 3 frames of jump squad. Nair unfortunately doesn't have a lot of range forward, and forward air is a fairly slow move, and considering a lot of landing aerials do pancake a lot of even tall opponents under it, uh, you're not really going to be able to use that as your main out of shield option. Pikachu's speed is still amazing, and Pikachu's small size will mean that characters will have to do landing aerials at a more specific timing to make them safe, which will make it easier to parry. For combos, as I mentioned, in my beginner guide, most of the game will revolve around landing Nair. Pikachu is more so an advantage type character, more so than a true combo type character, just like most of the cast in Ultimate. His combo game outside of low mid percents is actually fairly lackluster, pretty much just two or three piece combos between up tilt, up air, forward air, up tilt, up air, back air, quick attack, up tilt, up air, back air. Nothing too, too crazy. You're not going to be getting 40 to 50% when you hit your opponent at 45%. Yes, he does have his low percent strings with fair chains and bear chains, which both lead to up air chains that can finish with a bear. Remember that if you are doing fair chains to raw your up air since it starts behind you, otherwise you will probably whiff a lot of your combos, especially not at zero. However, if your opponent DI is out, fair chains are difficult in the first place since it puts your opponent into tumble after the second fair, even at 0%. Because of that, at 0%, I've been favoring the first fair into the weak up air into landing nair, which leads into up tilt or grab, and that's probably going to be your most optimal punish, assuming that you're not going for stage position or trying to push your opponent off stage. In my opinion, the best combo stuff for Pikachu are his nair loops, and yes, this in my opinion is an advanced technique, something I would put in the expert Pikachu guide, however there is not much else to put in terms of the combos, so I'm just gonna put it here and you all can start practicing it. I haven't tested this on every character, but up tilt and down throw can chain into themselves with the help of a fast fall nair. In order to do this, start with down throw at 0%, short hop, wait a little bit because you have to begin your nair, 
closer to the apex of your jump, or otherwise the Lanair will finish and you will not get the drag down hitbox that you need in order to continue this combo. So you're going to short hop, wait a little bit, then begin your Nair, and then fast fall. If done correctly, you should land without the final hit of Nair hitting, so you can combo it into pretty much anything you would normally. That means you can combo it into grab, aka another down throw, or an up tilt, which then can lead into another Nair, into another fast fall, and just do this over and over again. It does seem like down throw is the option for incredibly low percents between 0 and 20%, but up tilt starts being the better option after about 20 to 25% compared to down throw. I've legit gotten about 80% on heavier characters with this loop, starting with a down throw into a Nair fastball, grab, down throw, Nair fastball, up tilt, Nair fastball, over and over and over again until you push them out with an up air forward air. This is going to be Pikachu's most efficient combo, and because of the fact that you can start it with either a down throw or an up tilt or a landing Nair, it does still have a lot of versatility, even if it feels like it is only one combo. Besides that combo, most of Pikachu's offense is more so abusing his advantage state. Moves like up tilt and up air are fantastic, either anti airs or air to airs, respectively. So so you can keep people in disadvantage for a long, long time. If you are too far out of range for a punish with one of your normals, such as your up air or your forward air, quick attack is great, great, great at covering landings, as your opponent will typically whiff an aerial and you can zip in with quick attack under them, zip back through and then get an up air or fair and just continue your pressure for whatever. I know I mentioned quick attack in terms of recovery and disadvantage in my beginner guide, but it is actually huge as a neutral tool due to its speed and its mix ups. Not only that, but it will immediately put your opponents in disadvantage. At zero percent you will actually not be able to true combo into anything but Pikachu still has slight frame advantage for the most part but you're not really gonna be able to press any buttons that are really advantageous so if anything I would just kind of either go for a grab if you want to be offensive or just back up something that a lot of people do will actually try to mash out an attack when they get hit by quick attack at zero so honestly sometimes I've also been doing quick attack into shield and to an add a shield back air which then can lead into bigger combo since they will still be at very low percents Pikachu, compared to other characters, has about a quarter of a stage of burst range because of quick attack, so that, combined with his speed and his up air, means that Pika will be able to either juggle or get a landing trap with quick attack, forcing your opponent to go to the ledge if they want to be safe. When your opponent does go to ledge, Pikachu's ledge trapping is actually insane. A lot of options are ineffective versus Pikachu due to the ability for Pikachu to cover multiple options with the same thing, and also due to the fact that his height makes it so that a lot of ledge hop aerials will actually miss Pikachu, which is ridiculously silly. Short hop Bear covers ledge jump the best and ledge roll due to the fact that you can dash backwards and get a roll, but also it can cover neutral getup as you will have enough frame advantage to kind of short hop fair, realize they're neutral getup being land, and then hit them with either an up tilt or a grab. Forward smash can cover neutral getup, ledge jump, ledge hop, and getup attack, which is really ridiculous if you space it correctly. However, this is more of a timing thing, so you do have to guess right as Pikachu. If you react to any movement off of ledge and release your forward smash, that will hit ledge jump and ledge hop aerials. If you wait, you will be able to time your forward smash against getup attack and neutral getup assuming you are spaced outside of the getup's attack range and you can get the sweet spot due to the fact that Pikachu's forward smash lingers for I believe more than 12 frames at this point. When you are going for forward air and forward smash roll is honestly the best option or just being patient as the opponent but if Pikachu is reacting correctly you will still be able to cover a lot of these options as Pikachu. As you can see it is fairly difficult for your opponent to get off the ledge against Pikachu but even then it's fairly hard to even get to the ledge because of Pikachu's amazing edge guarding. Wow nice Segway, e Sam. Thanks, Esam. Edgeguarding is one of the most difficult things to show in terms of a guide, and it is one of the reasons I never made an edgeguarding guide in Smash 4, because a lot of it is character-specific and resource-specific, and there are so many things that go into it, it's not just, hey, these options are good, go for them. Given that, I do want to mention the fact that Pikachu is one of, if not the only character that can simultaneously cover low and high recoveries. You can jump off stage, do an aerial, fall with another aerial, and then jump in thunder to cover a high recovery, which is ridiculous. There are a lot of situations where characters with Average recoveries legitimately just die if you play your cards correctly, and Pikachu has tools to edgeguard pretty much every character in the entire game. Yes, I mean every character. If your opponent has no jump, or even if they do have a jump, pretty much every character should die between Thunder Jolt, Fair, Back Air, or Downer, and if they don't die, they're at least going to take a decent amount of percent. Jumping off forwards means that Bear will always send back towards the stage, so be careful about that unless you are specifically trying to get a stage spike set. Again, a lot of the things that I want to show are very character specific and I'm not going to go into a character-by-character -character breakdown of edge guarding, but just kind of try to understand your opponent's flow when they are recovering, whether they go high, when they start using their air dodges, where they like to up if they like to up early, or later if they try to air dodge to the ledge, or on stage, if, like, what do they want to do? You are going to have to kind of get those patterns in your head and capitalize on them, because even though they may guess right four times, the fifth time, if you guess right, 
you will kill them, and that is so, so valuable as Pikachu between your drag downs, between your spike, between just continually putting a lot of characters off stage over and over and over again to the point where they can't make it back or they have to do a recovery in a specific position, in which case you can kill them. Pikachu's edge guards are very free flowing, so figure out which flow chart feels right to you and feels like you are doing the right thing. And remember, edge guards that work on one matchup will not necessarily work for all others, so keep an open mind and keep open matchup knowledge. And that's gonna be it for this one. The expert guide will take a while to come out since I haven't put enough time in the lab to feel comfortable telling everyone what experts do, but once I get that all in place, probably in a couple months in my opinion, you can expect a super in-depth expert guide. Also, I've been feeling a bit more comfortable with Samus, so I may do an overarching guide that isn't quite as detailed as this one, but, uh, you know, if you guys want that, please let me know in the comments down below. And yeah, as always, social media, Panda, and partner stuff is down below. Subscribe to this channel if you want more Pikachu knowledge or just more Smash Ultimate knowledge in general. I would very much so appreciate it, and I will see you all next time.